If you're an entrepreneur, you know what it means to take personal and financial risks, create jobs that support your community, and devote most of your time to your business. But do you know how to plan for a successful exit from your business? Do you know who should be involved in creating your succession or transition plan and the steps along the way? Welcome to Finish Big, the podcast with Mark Dorman from Legacy Business Advisors. The podcast theme is inspired by critically acclaimed business author, Bo Burlingham, author of Finish Big, how great entrepreneurs exit their companies on top. In this podcast, you'll hear success stories of exit plans done right and pick up practical tips based on years of legacy business advisors' expertise and knowledge about the largest and most important financial transaction of your life. Now, on to the show. Good afternoon. This is your host, Mark Dorman, and welcome to the Finish Big Podcast. Today is uh, a great day for me. I have got one of my really good and dear business friends who has just made a tremendous impact on the business owners that he works with. I want to introduce you to Mr. Bob Hodum. Bob is located in the Dayton, Ohio market, also referred to as the Miami Valley, where the two Miami rivers come together and then flow into the Ohio and Southern Ohio at the Queen City of Cincinnati. But let me tell you a little bit about Bob before we get started. Bob Hodum works every day to bring businesses throughout the Miami Valley together to share ideas, connections, and opportunities to drive action towards success. Bob brings forward necessary guidance and accountability to businesses, gives them the accelerant they need to push past obstacles and exceed their own expectations. As the owner of the Alternative Board Miami Valley, or TAB, T-A-B, Bob's unique form of aggressive empathy, we'll touch on that, has helped to guide countless businesses towards successful outcomes. Challenging owners and company leadership to think differently, to think outside the box, and then holding them accountable to turn thoughts into action and push with a firm hand in the back their companies forward. Bob acts as an inspiring facilitator, growing networks that go well beyond talk and strengthen the underlying relationships that define the business community in his region. Combined with his empathetic ear and propensity to challenge business owners to think through things from different angles, Bob has leveraged his special skills as a connector, a facilitator, and a counselor to become one of the fastest growing tab franchises in the world, ladies and gentlemen, to benefit the businesses in the Miami Valley who have only gotten stronger and more comforted under his guidance and leadership. Bob Hodum, my friend, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it very much. Um, I think most of what you said is true at this point in time. Well, uh, you've got a lot to live up there, my friend, but uh, let's get started. So I've known you probably eight years very well and a huge fan of yours. Uh, you're in what I would call a, a small metropolitan market, the, the Dayton, Ohio market, very dynamic, albeit, mm -hmm. but you've made a tremendous impact and we're going to touch on that. But before we before we touch on who is TAB and how did you get into, involved in TAB, et cetera, give us your background. How did you get involved in business coaching and running and facilitating peer-to-peer -peer boards for the alternative board? Well, it's interesting you comment about that. If I go back to the mid-70s when I graduated from The Ohio State University, um, the first company I worked for is a company called John Deere, which probably many of your listeners are familiar with. And uh, within about six weeks, I was working with private business owners and basically for the next 45, six, seven years, worked with private business owners, either with deer or with other um, categories, industries that I worked in and so forth. And I learned relatively quickly the challenges the private business owner has in terms of the inability to talk to people and have no one to talk to, if you will, except a spouse who either said, You'll, you'll be great, honey, or I told you not to go in this business to start with. So not a lot there, if you will. So when I turned age 60, I decided I wanted to kind of follow that path. Uh, I had gotten old enough that corporate America wasn't looking to hire 60-year-olds at that point in time. Mm. And so I found the alternative board, which happens to be a franchise based out of Westminster, Colorado. I decided to go the franchise route because I was a guy that got on an airplane every Monday morning, came back Friday night. And at one point in time, I had 1.6 million Hilton points. I traveled so doggone much. Jeez, 
Yeah, well, I still have some left, and that was I quit traveling in 2013. So anyway, having said all that, I wanted to see business. I enjoy seeing business owners succeed, grow, develop, uh, and uh, uh, the alternative board process here in the Miami Valley allows me to do that. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate that background. I, I just want to remind our, our listeners, the Finish Big podcast really is alive and was created uh, really in conjunction with Bo Burlingham. And you think, well, why would we have a business coach on the Finish Big podcast? The reason is because I've seen it firsthand, business coaches, and certainly we've got one of the best I've ever met in my life, Bob Hodum, on the line here. They can make such a tremendous impact to holding you accountable, getting your affairs in order, uh, helping you go through personal visioning processes, uh, and really building and maximizing the value of your business. So if you're listening to this, you really ought to think about getting a business coach. They're certainly part of our exit planning process at our firm, but back to you, Bob. So, and we've explored this over dinner and times, but when you come from corporate America into small business ownership, your own, the franchise of the alternative board of Miami Valley, it's such a jump or a leap of faith to say, how do I take what I know from corporate America into small business America? Can you touch on that? That's a good point, Mark. And interestingly enough, I do validation with a number of business owners around the country who think they want to become alternative board franchisees, if you will. And that's one of the first things that I, I develop. First of all, many people are biz very business owners have been or not business owners, but businessmen have been successful in large corporate settings. Mine was dear, predominantly because they were surrounded with good people. And so if you needed more sales, you talk to your sales manager, you need more marketing, you talk to the marketing group and so forth. Unfortunately, in the private business owner sector, if you want more marketing, you talk to yourself. If you want more sales, you probably talk to yourself or your sales salespeople or whatever the case may be. I often say that there are a lot of levers to pull, but they're all attached to your to the back of your pants. And when you lift up one, <laughs> which is the other, if you will. Well, when I came out of corporate America, I was blessed because a fair amount of the time that I was in the corporate setting, I worked with private business owners and I learned that that, um, you know, if you're going to do something as a private business owner, you're the one that's got to do it. I'm not surrounded by individuals who uh, individuals who uh, will do marketing or sales or whatever for you. I've got to do it all myself. And I, I sort of knew that, if you will. And a lot of folks that come out of corporate don't understand that scenario. They were successful as part of a larger group. You're now the leader of the team. And in my case, I have uh, just me and a couple of 1099. So mm -hmm. that scenario. So that's, I think that's the biggest challenge that most people coming out of corporate have. And many, many people come out of corporate are very good at their jobs, but they're not entrepreneurial in spirit. And they need to be entrepreneurial in spirit and in actuality in order to be successful. Yeah, I would completely concur with everything you said there. I mean, we, you and I have discussed this many, many times, and you see very talented people that have maybe managed a, a P&L, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not larger. They've been responsible for a budget. But when you say go start a business uh, from scratch, and you know, you are literally the head cook, chief bottle cook, and or bottle cook, washer, et cetera, you know the saying, I mean, you're doing everything. And uh, that's a great analogy. If you want more sales, look in the mirror. If you want better cash flow, you better look in the mirror. And if you want to build culture, you better look in the mirror as well. So it can be it can be a daunting task. But so you had this passion for coaching. Uh, was that an itch that you had been scratching like your entire career while you were at Deer and prior to that? And and how did you end up at Tab? And and who else did you look at? There are a few questions there. Yeah, uh, clearly. Well, first of all. I didn't, I wasn't a guy that wanted to get out of corporate America and hang out my own shingle and spend 18 months figuring out who, what, when, where, what my differentiators are. So I immediately looked to the marketplace for products, uh, in this case, franchises or licensee products. I also did not want to be the traditional consultant type. I wanted to be help people succeed and grow beyond their wildest expectations. And I wanted to be around to see it. And so I, I got away from the traditional consulting role. In our case, we do peer advisory groups and individual business coaching. And uh, you see the successes, and we've seen a number of failures too. But you see the successes, and I wanted to be around to see that. And and so that was that was the scenario. Now, how, how I found the alternative board, 
actually uh, was through a franchise um, uh, broker, if you will. And when I sugared things off, as they used to say when I lived in Vermont, when I sugared things off, the alternative board was fit for me. Peer advisory groups, individual coaching, they had a process, they had a marketing approach, and they allowed me to go from, at the time, I had, I think, 150 LinkedIn connections. I now have 5,200 and uh, it, they gave me the, the marketing, if you will, in order to get me off the ground. So that's why I went the franchise route. I looked at more traditional business coaching uh, situations, um, uh, the action coaches and so forth, the world. That really wasn't for me. Yeah. So so let me, I'm going to come back to that. But so uh, I did some research here. I know a lot about TAB, as you know, uh, but TAB is based in outside of Denver, as you said, in Westminster, Colorado, but it is truly a global business with franchisees or franchise ors for some countries, right? Selling peer-to-peer -peer coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching and accountability throughout the entire world. I think they're in something like, is it 22 countries, 40 some countries? It's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, 25 right now. Yeah. 25. I mean, I know they're all over the UK, Europe, Israel, New Zealand, Australia. What right. am I missing? South America? Um, they just moved in India not too long ago, Spain, uh, and then they're looking, they're looking at the Pacific Rim right now. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, Bob, a question that I have is: there's a ton of coaching and peer platforms out there. There's YPO, EO, Vistage. Uh, there's the Growth Coach, Action Coach. There's the Great Game of Business Coaches out there. And as I say to my clients and prospects all the time, I, you know, forget what they're called. The value of a coach is incredible. Mm -hmm. And why did you select tab? What was the kind of differentiator between in your mind, between tab and all the others? Um, having done some mastermind groups earlier in my career, uh, I, I like the process of being able to bring private business owners together in any given room with seven or eight business owners. You got a couple hundred years worth of business experience, they compare, contrast, bring issues, that sort of thing. And so I, I really wanted to be associated with an organization that had that that, that metric, if you will. Uh, and then uh, in this case, so I ended up choosing TAB because of the peer advisory groups uh, where I actually act as a facilitator. And then during the individual coaching, I act as the accountability partner. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that that appealed to me the most. Uh, and I also looked at it from an, frankly, from a business annuitization factor. Uh, you know, we charge month to month as long as my clients are satisfied, and uh, they'll continue to pay. And so, I, you know, it's a, it was a, certainly not altruistic, but it just looked like the best model for me. I didn't want to wake up on a uh, Sunday, uh, early Monday morning, having just completed a consulting assignment and figure out, okay, now what am I going to do tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And so, this this particular process brought the annuitization, the repetitive the repetitive work that, you know, that we do with these clients. And I've got 23 clients now, 24, 25 clients have been with me seven years or longer. And I've been doing this about a little bit over nine. So, right. And in and, and the intro, I mean, you uh, had the fastest, one of the fastest growing uh, tab franchises, the alternative board uh, yeah. in the world. Uh, how many members do we have today? Um, as of, as of about four hours ago, I'm at 64. 64. And uh, I mean, that is a tremendous have, number. That is a tremendous have, we number. Have, we are, we have six boards and, and the people I'm signing up now, we're going to add a seventh. I have a couple of certified facilitators who run some of the groups as well. That's great. That's great. So uh, let's move on. So talk to me about the value of a business coach. And remember, we're here on finish big. And really, it's about the, sure. it's about really yeah. maybe the uh, the last four innings of the game or three innings of the game, you know, preparedness, organizational, professionalizing your business, really getting that, developing that strategic mindset. Talk to us about the value of a business coach in that process. Let me use, let me use a testimonial of a, um, uh, an individual I signed up about six or seven months ago. He and I have known one another for three or four years. He is one of the bigger players in the asphalt and seal coating business down here in southwestern Ohio. And uh, through dialogue and so forth, he said, you know, I've had business coaches and I've had uh, uh, yeah, work with my accountant and so forth in about X number of years. I've got, in this case, about seven. I want to be able to sell this business. I'm of a certain size. I know I need to get bigger. And he mm -hmm. outlined about three, four, five things. And he basically said, you know, 
I've seen what you've been doing through a joint networking group we have and so forth. There may be time for me to consider this very coachable individual, but he said, maybe surrounding myself with other business owners uh, makes, makes sense to me in that regard. And so uh, he signed on with his last, uh, gosh, October, I guess it was, if you will. And the board I put him on happened to have a couple of individuals, one of which has just sold his business and another uh, two who are, are in that initial process of the dating or the courting, however you want to look at it. So he's being able to see, okay, what did they do? What did they do that I shouldn't do? Uh, you know, uh, often we learn in business that you, you experience costs as money. And if you can take advantage of someone else's experience, possibly that will save us some uh, time, effort, and more importantly, money in this situation. And yeah. so you know, those those are the examples of the individuals who who tend to be drawn to what we do. I know I've been driving this train across the plains um, for the last 25, 30, 35 years, and I see the station in the distance, but I don't know how to stop this damn thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we get surrounded with other business owners. And then, of course, the individual accountability coaching to, to kind of help them figure out how to approach a station effectively and not put it through the back wall. Yeah. Yeah. When I was on your website, I noticed that tab, uh, has some proprietary business tools, some analytics. What can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, that was one of the other things that, that appealed to me and they've strengthened them since I started in 2014, but the tools, one of the first things we do when we bring a member on is we do what's called a business diagnostic. And that, for lack of a better term, is a business uh, gap analysis tool. And so the gap analysis tool or business diagnostic, uh, if you decide, for example, you want to improve marketing and you want to be a nine out of a 10 in marketing by uh, doing the answering a series of questions under marketing and you find out you're like 4.3, okay, where's the gap? What do we do? For the next 90 days, we're going to focus on marketing. We're going to make these changes in order to drive the process forward. And then what I do after about a year, I have them redo the diagno di diagnostics tool and say, how have you improved? Oh, we're now seven out of nine in marketing. Okay, now what do we focus on? Because private business owners will tend to establish you know, 14 different first priorities. And we all know you can't do that. Yeah. So what's really the first priority? Once yeah. we get beyond that, then we find that some of the other priorities take care of themselves, if you will. So, yeah, they have a series of tools. They have a strategic planning tool and so forth that we use on occasion as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it is uh, remarkable. I, I, I'm familiar with the tool you're referring to. It's almost like a, an MRI for your business, right? Kind of looks Precisely. inside and said, hey, compared to the, the best in class, you're kind of here. That objectivity is very powerful because the other thing that we know, both as business owners and as advisors, is – Business owners, you know, the complexity of their lives really breeds this insanely independent, almost uh, moat-like surrounding them. And they, they don't know how they compare to their peers. They don't know if they're doing a good job. They just keep doing it. I think what sure. TAB and coaching does is allows you to kind of step outside, work with a coach, help you evaluate where you're at, what you need to fix. We all need to fix things. And then setting, developing that strategic and maintaining that strategic mindset with your clients. And, and, and I know you've had some really, really phenomenal success stories. So, so that's the independent, the, or the one on one coaching, rather, I should say, not independent. But talk to me about the peer to peer boards. Uh, how long are they? I mean, I've read some are as many as eight to 10 hours long. Um, which I mean, I couldn't sit still that long, but how long are yours? What's the agenda? Uh, I'm assuming you facilitate the majority of these, and I imagine you've got a lot of uh, quote unquote tales tales from the trenches, right? Yeah, well, um, yeah, we 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 generally speaking have no more than uh, either eight or nine members in a group. Uh, we meet for half a day. Uh, three of our groups happen to meet in the morning, and three happen to meet in the afternoon. The same people meet each month, if you will. As I mentioned, I think earlier in this narrative, uh, the average business experience in that group, probably 240, 250 years. And so very few issues were brought by someone that someone doesn't house else doesn't have experience with in that regard. And, uh, uh, and like I said, we run four hours. So everybody gets roughly 25 minutes or so. Uh, we're very structured agenda wise. We bring an issue. We go through a questioning process to make sure everybody's in a room. 
you know how it is you got seven people lined up and you say mark has a hangnail and by the time he gets to number seven he's got stage four cancer so we, want to, <laughs> we make sure that that we make sure everybody in the room is on the same page because a lot of times people who don't understand that we get divergent feedback and we won't don't want to don't want to have that and then they get feedback from the other uh, business owners and they say i really like what connie over here said and i'm going to do that between now and the next meeting and then I come in and, and do the accountability coaching about halfway between each of the group meetings. So we're only half a day. Occasionally we have an educational component, but generally speaking, we really focus on making sure that every business owner, uh, if he desires, has the time to present his issue and get feedback from the business owner. Since that's kind of the kind of the hallmark of how our system is is set up. Mm -hmm. So is there, there must be, uh, you know, in, in business, it's 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 like, Sometimes you feel like when I talk to business owners, it's like, well, what's that going to cost? And what are we going to have? I'm going to be on a board. People are going to tell me what to do. I'm like, no, what if they told you what not to do and, and saved you from, you know, the mistakes that Bob Hodum or Mark Dorman has made, or my gosh, countless others. And how much would that be worth to you? So I imagine there's a fee structure involved for this. Talk, talk to us about how that works. Yeah, there are there is a there is an initial business setup fee, and that's a one time charge. We get you set up in some of our proprietary tools. We also do some initial coaching. Uh, a high percentage of the business owners you work with don't understand their communication style, so we do something called a DISC profile. Mm -hmm. Some people may be familiar with the Myers Briggs, but uh, that's always that's always a really interesting process taking them through the in the disc profile. And I always tell them to take it home to their spouse. And the next time we coach, they said, well, what did your spouse say? They said, well, why did you pay money for that? I could have told you that, <laughs> but they don't, they don't, they don't understand. They don't necessarily understand a communication style. And now they know why they can't get along with Bill, Fred or Connie yeah. because their style is just 180 degrees away, if you will. And once they're set up, then we put them into the board setting. And so uh, we charge a monthly fee. You pay month to month. Uh, there's no long-term commitment. Although I said I have 25 members have been with me seven years or longer. And so even though I'm charging month to month, it still behooves us. And obviously it's very important to us to make sure that we're still continuing to deliver value in that scenario. And with those 27 folks, if I went back to five, now I'm like a 35 or 36 members. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've been delivering value for some time. And people often ask me, well, you know, after a few years, doesn't the thing run out? Well, what ends up happening is, is you have one and a half, two, two and a half million dollar businesses that become four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six million dollar businesses. I have several examples of those. Uh, so they still have challenges. Challenges are different. You're moving from a what I call a pastoral church where everybody comes to the owner to more of a community church where you've got five or six people that you come to. And one does facilities, one does worship, and one does building and grounds. Uh, and so forth. One does finance. And so now you begin, you've got to develop that next level of individuals. And we do that as well in, in, in that particular setting. And generally speaking, in, in our boards, at least, there's a broad enough spectrum of businesses in terms of size that, that there's someone in that group that can help them to that next level. So that's where the uh, we're, we're blessed uh, about, e, I think, our retention rate right now down here in the Miami Valley is between 85 and 90 percent. So. Wow. Well, wow, that's phenomenal. So our guest today, again, Bob Hodum with the Alternative Board for TAB Miami Valley, and that is in the southwest corner of Ohio uh, near mm -hmm. Cincinnati. What What is the fee structure? How How would we get in contact you? And then I want to talk about some tales from the trenches as we before we close here. I'm sure you've got some phenomenal uh, success stories, but talk to me about how someone would get a hold of you, what that assessment looks like, et cetera. Well, from a from a uh, get a hold of me, if you will, it's uh, first initial last name, B-H-O-T-H-E-M at tabmiamivalley.com. Or you can go to the info page of my website, which is www.tabmiamivalley.com. And you'll actually see a number of testimonials from my clients on that website, if you will. So uh, as far as the fee structure is concerned, we charge a month to month basis. I happen to charge five ninety nine a month for the mm -hmm. four our group meeting of seven or uh, seven or eight other business owners and an hour's individual coaching uh, yeah. in that scenario. Interestingly enough, value, we have, yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, we have a couple of husband and wives who are on different boards, a couple of brothers who are on different boards, et cetera. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility, if you will. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And I, uh, I can, I can uh, attest to it firsthand, but Tell us from the trenches, Bob. Give us uh, what's your greatest success story or two from people that you've maybe 
you and your board have brought along, nurtured, uh, increased their confidence, increased their business performance? I'm sure you've got some good stories. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a few, and not sound arrogant, but we've been blessed in that regard. I, mm-hmm. I, I, a couple, of, a couple that come to mind. I have a, I have a, a client that sells uh, high-end appliances: Wolf Sub Zero, Thermador, uh, Bosch, Mila. You know, not the stuff you'd necessarily buy at, at Home Depot or Lowe's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he started with us about six and a half years ago. Three-person organization. Uh, he's doing about a million and a half a year. He had a son who was 20 at the time, was 27, 28, I guess. Mm-hmm. And the board kept saying, well, what's your exit strategy? He was in his early 50s, or uh, mid-50s at the time. What's your exit strategy? Well, I don't know. I'll probably just close it down. Uh, uh, and well, why is that? Well, what about your son? Oh, he's got a good job with Montgomery County. He's got good benefits. He'd never be interested in this business. And so after about four board meetings and people cajoling him, he finally says, okay, I'll say dang it, but he didn't. And he said, I'll ask him, but, you know, so he came back to the next board meeting, and this was in February. Well, did you ask, uh, his, na- his son's name was Joe. Did you ask Joe? He said, yeah, he starts the 1st of March. <laughs> Jason, uh, Joe was, Price said, Dad, what took you so long, right? Yeah, that was six years ago. Joe now owns 25% of the business. They've gone from a million and a half. Last year, they closed slightly under $8 million. Wow. COVID was very good for them uh, in that scenario. They now have a 401k plan. Uh, they have a profit sharing plan. They're up to about six employees. They've doubled the size of their facility. Uh, their gross margin is up about five points. Uh, their profitability is up about 20, 20 percentage points, if you will. Uh, at the time, uh, the board convinced him to hire a marketing company just because of the nature of his business, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that marketing company now has been with him five years and uh, is, you know, he's, he, he is the first one to point out that, you know, I'll, his, he told me, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, he said, my wife asked me how long I was going to do that. And he said, well, either till Joe takes over the business 100% or I die, whichever comes first. Mm-hmm. So in that scenario. And then during COVID, I had a client, they built scenery for the live entertainment industry. And uh, when I signed up the, the husband about eight years ago, he said, you know, one year I'm a million four, one year I'm a million five, one year I'm a million four. I'd really like to get to two million. Will this process help us? And I said, "Well, I think it will, but give it a try." Uh, so about four and a half years later, he approached me and he says, "You know, my wife is fifty percent owner in this business, and uh, but she just acts like an employee. She doesn't act like an owner. So maybe we should put her on a board." I said, "Sure." So I have a couple of certified facilitators. We put her on a separate board. I don't coach her. I don't. She's not on my board. Uh, about six months later, his name is Dan and his wife's name is Mary Beth. I said, so how are you doing so far with this, Dan? He said, well, the old cliche is careful what you ask for, you may get it. And what he found was that Mary Beth was very good at the things he was not. He was very good at vision. He's very good at saying we need to cut this cost or increase this or whatever. Mary Beth, every time he'd say, well, we need to cut this cost or whatever the case may be. She said, how does it impact the employees? How does it impact the employees? And it got a little frustrating for them. But what they did is they developed a division, things that are directly uh, a pension uh, 401k plan, uh, things like the the health plan and that Mm -hmm. sort of thing. She handles, he handles things like what product line we're going to bring in, what particular proposals, what cruise lines we're going to go after, what live entertainment, that sort of thing. It's worked out beautifully. Then in 2020, they had to shut down because their their business, even though it's two million dollars worth of work on the floor, uh, was considered to be not essential, and that was uh, that was a challenge for them. They had gotten to about four four and a half million, and they were tailing back. They were tailing back to uh, uh, you know approaching a two million. And anyway, we found a, a supplier that said he was essential, got him up and running, and basically last year closed about seven point seven seven point eight million. And we're, they had nineteen when they started with us. They've got thirty nine employees now. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Our guest today has been Bob Hodum. Bob is a franchise owner, business owner himself, but most importantly is a phenomenal business coach with the Alternative Board. The Alternative Board is a global organization based in Westminster, Colorado. His organization, Tab Miami Valley, is located in the southwest corner of Ohio. If you need a business coach, ladies and gentlemen, please speak with Bob. But if you don't have a coach, find one uh, because you're just hearing the, the phenomenal impact businesses that have gone from a million dollars to eight million, two million to seven million. 
And it's really this peer-to-peer accountability, this working on your business, this strategic mindset that great coaches like Bob Hodum can help you develop and maintain uh, and hold you accountable to it. And uh, Bob, it's been an absolute pleasure to be your friend uh, for the last eight years. And uh, in full disclosure, uh, I will say, I will share this with the audience before we wrap up here. Uh, my son, uh, Aiden, took a job in Cincinnati. I said, you need to work with Bob Hodum. He says, why, Dad? I said, can't you help me? I said, yeah, of course I could help you, but I'm your dad. I said, you need a coach, and Bob's the best one I know. So if you're looking at a coach and you're in the Miami Valley, Ohio area, I would uh, do yourself a favor and meet with Bob Hodum and his team. They'll, uh, they will do you, do you well. Until uh, next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Dorman, your host of the Finish Big Podcast. I want to wish every one of you a great rest of your week, and thank you, Bob Hodum. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed listening to Finish Big, the podcast with Mark Dorman from Legacy Business Advisors. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes are available. Learn more at LegacyBusinessAdvisors.com or call 330-350-5410. Please be aware the information in these podcasts represent the views and opinions of our guests and do not necessarily represent the views or opinions of legacy business advisors. The content is for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional tax or legal advice. Always seek the advice of your legal or tax professional with any questions regarding your specific situation.